What's up my friends, Mike again, glad to have you guys back. Today we are going to talk about the main character of the home theater, which is the ultra short throw projector. So for my setup, I've been using the Hisense PX1 Pro. So I've been using this projector for the last four months and I've got a lot to say about it. So in this video, I'm gonna share my whole experience with it. I'm gonna tell you guys all the things that I liked and don't like about it so that you can see if this is in fact the right projector for your home theater setup as well. And full disclosure, Hisense did send the projector in for review. However, I'm not being paid to say anything good or bad about it. So if there's anything that sucks, you'll definitely know about it. Everything that's said in this video is my opinion only. So the first cool thing about this projector is that it's an ultra short throw projector. And how it works is that the screen size is dependent on how far away it is from the screen. So if it's closer, the screen size will be a lot smaller. And to get it to fit the screen, which is 120 inches, it's around like 18 inches from the back of the projector to the screen and the front of the projector is at 28 inches. So compared to other ultra short throw projectors, this distance between the projector and the screen is a bit bigger. So if you don't have a media unit like this where you can pull the drawer out, your cabinet is going to be quite far away from the screen. And that's something really important to note because that affects the whole setup. So the second cool thing about this projector is that it uses is three lasers. It has a pure red, pure green, and pure blue laser. So the colors on this is super vibrant. When I'm watching movies and everything, the colors just look unreal to me. Like I can't believe I can get this type of picture quality from my projector. Also, this is a 4K HDR projector. So when it's displaying images on this big screen, the images are all super crisp and everything looks really sharp. The other thing that really helps is that this projector is super bright as well. It's rated at 2200 ANSI lumens. So right now in this room, I'm using a lot of lights to film this video. And the screen that I'm using is not a ambient light rejecting screen. So it looks kind of washed out. But usually when I'm using it, all the lights are off and the picture quality is just top notch. So with this projector or any projector in general, when the room gets darker, the picture quality gets better. As for black levels, I noticed that when watching non-HDR content on the screen, like with a lot of Netflix shows, the blacks appear a bit lighter than I would prefer. However, this changes when watching HDR content, the blacks actually look really dark, so it was pretty impressive. So the quality of the black levels really depend on the type of content you're watching. Moving on to gaming, I played a lot of Nintendo Switch on it and I was quite impressed as well. The latency was quite low, so for playing console games like Smash Bros, it worked perfectly. My friends and I were super amazed at the quality. Playing on such a big screen made it a super immersive experience and everyone could see what was going on without squinting their eyes. And next, the projector does have two built-in speakers. They are 15 watts each and they are Dolby Atmos speakers. So in the first three months when I was using it, I was using the built-in speakers itself and it was actually quite decent. It felt like the sound was actually coming out of the screen versus coming out from the projector in the lower part of the screen. You can totally use the speakers by itself. However, if you wanna get a home theater experience, I would definitely improve the audio by adding a sound bar or other speakers. So for my setup, I put a sound bar right above and in front of the projector. And I gotta say that the sound difference is huge. It's definitely worth adding the external speakers. So on the back of the projector, there are a ton of ports for you to connect your external speakers to the projector. So I like how there's two HDMI ports so you can add different devices. And in my case, I actually have my Apple TV and my Nintendo Switch connected to my soundbar, which then connects to the projector using just that one HDMI EARC port. And the reason why I did that is because I want the devices directly connected to the soundbar so that the video and the audio will be matched perfectly. So with the projector, there's actually Android TV built inside. So with the operating system, you can use Chromecast, you can access the Play Store to download a lot of apps. But the reason why I have Apple TV is because with the Play Store, you can't download Netflix. So this is quite a common thing with projectors. I'm not sure why you can't download Netflix on it. So if you do want to use Netflix, you're going to have to stream it from an external device like like how I am doing it with my Apple TV. But if you don't use Netflix, you're probably going to be fine because you can still use like Disney Plus, Prime Video, Tubi, YouTube, and you can download a bunch of other streaming apps through the Play Store. So this is the remote that comes with the projector. It has a lot of shortcuts on it and stuff like that. But um, the remote is a bit plasticky and that's okay because I don't really use it because I use my Apple TV remote the most along with my remote for my soundbar. However, this remote is important because you 
you need it to go in the menu settings to change the picture quality and to actually adjust the screen size and the focus. So with the focusing and the geometric correction, this is one thing that, that I do not like about this projector. So for example, when we go into focus adjustment, it gives you like a bunch of text and you press up and down to adjust it so that everything is sharp. However, it's a very manual process. I'm not sure if it's my eyes or something sometimes that it's not getting it sharp. But with this focusing system, you just kind of have to eyeball it, which is not the most accurate. The other thing with the geometric correction is that there are a lot of points that you can adjust in and out, up and down to fit your screen perfectly. And there are also legs on the bottom that you can adjust the height with. However, again, it's a very manual process. So setting this up for the first time actually took me quite a while. You have to play around with it a lot to get it perfect. So I'm not the biggest fan of this because with my Xtreme projector, it could do all of this on its own automatically. So if Hisense makes a new version of this, which they actually do, it's the PX2. I'm not sure if it's out yet or not, but I would like to see more of an automated setup process. And with all these factors combined, it makes this projector a very immobile setup. Like every time you move it somewhere else, you're gonna have to redo all of this again. But if you have a home theater and it's staying there, then it's not gonna be too much of a problem. Because once you set it, you can forget it. And talking about improvements, the other thing I would have liked to seen on the projector is actually a dust cover. Because with BenQ's projector, it actually has a sliding cover that closes automatically when the projector shuts down to prevent dust buildup and all that stuff from the laser. So you don't have to clean it as much. But besides that, I think the picture quality of the PX1 Pro is really good. And it's like a really good all-in-one solution if you want to keep it simple and just use their Android TV, built-in speakers and all that. So the PX1 Pro is around $3,500 to 4,000 depending on if it's on sale or not. And that is quite expensive. However, it's still cheaper than like a 100 inch TV. And if you were to ask me, would I choose a 75 or 85 inch TV over this huge 120 inch screen? I would actually choose this because the screen size is so immersive. When I'm watching movies down here and everything, I can't even play on my phone because this big screen captures my attention so much. And I just get so immersed in it. All the movies I watch look great. You know, I have like a 65 inch TV in my other living room. And the truth is I don't actually use that anymore. I always come down here to watch movies. So having a home theater like this is awesome. And now with all these technological advancements, projectors look great nowadays. And I don't know how they can get even better. I think Hisense has an 8K projector coming out. That is super exciting. I'm not sure how much sharper 8K is, but I think it will be quite mind blowing. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'd love to help you guys out. And if you're still watching up to this point, thank you so much for supporting my videos and watching till the end. Make sure you drop a water wave emoji in the comments below to let me know that you watch up to this point. And that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye.